In today's video, I'm gonna share with you some exciting new updates to Photoshop. Let's get started. The tool I use most in Photoshop is the selection tool, especially when I'm creating my thumbnails and I need to crop myself out and place text behind me or other backgrounds. Now in this update, there's a range of improvements to the selection tool. So let's say we wanna separate this woman from the background so we can put text behind her. What you can use here is the object selection tool. Now this isn't new to this version, but it is fairly new. So what you can do now is you can kind of hover over the subject and it will auto detect the edges for you. So if I click on this, it creates that selection around her and I can just press command J or control J on a PC and it will create a new layer for the selection. And now I can turn off the background and now we have our nice selection. So from here, I can use the type tool to type out some text and I can place this layer behind her and scale up the text nicely. But you'll notice that there's this little rock here and I want that to be in front of the L. So I can click on the background layer again and then go to the object selection tool and just click and select that rock and it will auto detect those edges and then press command J again and bring this rock above the T. And then we can change the color of the text if we like to a darker color. So now it's a very quick way of putting text behind your subject and selecting your objects. So while creating selections like this isn't anything new, the object selection tool is just continuing to get better and better. So that way it'll just be faster for you to remove subjects and place new backgrounds behind them, for example. Now this next update is actually really exciting. It's making object removal super fast. So for example, here I have this photo of this hike I press command zero, it'll scale to frame. Now what I wanna do is select him just like we did before. So I'm gonna use the object selection tool and notice that it's starting to recognize things in the background, that's another update. So I wanna select all of him. So I'm just gonna click and select him. And then all I'm gonna do is press shift delete and he's gone. It's a little bit blurry here. Like you can kind of see the outline of him, but if you just gave somebody this photo and you're like, hey, here's a photo that I took, would you even know that a person was there before? Maybe not. It's just getting better and better. So what this did, the shift delete, it's a new shortcut to essentially delete the subject and do content aware fill in place of where that person or object was. Let's try another one. So here's a shot in Morocco. And what if we wanted to get rid of these guys here. Some of them, it doesn't detect it yet, but I can imagine in a couple of years, it's going to get super, super sensitive to object selections. So let's say we want to remove this guy. Let's just select it and shift delete. If you hover over it and it doesn't create that pink object selection, you can just click and select and it will select that subject and then press shift delete. This one, click and select shift delete done. And now you can see we got rid of all of those people that were in the background. So using the combination of the object selection tool and the shift delete shortcut, you can quickly remove unwanted objects from your photos. But what about more complex scenes like this hiker crossing the bridge? In this case, if we use the object selection tool and hover over him and click, you'll notice that it had some trouble distinguishing between his arm and the bridge because of the similar colors. So you might have to go in and use the quick selection tool to go ahead and just add to the selection here. And you'll notice it will select part of the bridge, which we don't want. So we're gonna have to deselect that by pressing option or alt to remove the unwanted selections and add to the selections. You might have to make some customization still because the object selection isn't exactly perfect. Now that we corrected the selection, make sure that you're on the object selection tool and press shift delete again. And now if we zoom in, you can see it's not perfect, right? The content aware fill can't predict what that pattern of the bridge is going to look like. There's no information there. So this is where the content aware fill can improve because it can't predict what's behind it. It can't generate new information when there is none because all content aware fill really does is just, you know, create pixels based on the surrounding pixels. It doesn't generate completely new ones. Now there are some AI tools out there like Dolly that can do this. And my friend Unmesh at Pix and Perfect, he recently made a video about this. And if you're curious how it works, you should definitely watch it. So if this video is helping you out so far, be sure to give it a thumbs up 
as well as subscribe. And a special thanks to Epidemic Sound for providing the music and sound effects for this video. If you're looking for some high quality music and sound effects for your videos on YouTube or for client projects, they have a great selection. You can see here, it actually shows me more of what I like. So if you tend to like a particular genre or a theme or a mood, it will show you new selections. And if you click on any one of these, you can always click on find similar next to a track and it will give you more similar tracks that you will like. You can also go to search and search Premiere Gal and you can find my Premiere Gal Editing Essentials playlist. You can use this code right here to get 50% off a personal plan and 30 days free of your first plan. Link is just down below. Also, you might notice that I'm wearing these headphones. These are the Meze 99 Classics, the Walnut Gold, and they're super lightweight and I use them for editing and my head never hurts, my ears never hurt. And Meze, they didn't sponsor this video. They just sent them to me to try out three or four years ago. And they recently sent me an updated version that includes a longer cord and a shorter cord. If you're interested in them, remember you can use my code PREMIERE20 to get $61.80 off your order. That's all there is for Meze. Now let's jump in to Photoshop. So I briefly touched on this earlier in the video, but one of the major big updates in this new version is that you can use the object selection tool to select multiple items inside of an image. So you can see here, I'm hovering over the scooter and it's like, oh, I want to create a mask of this. Same with the girl, same with the guy here. And it's going to be better at recognizing the background in the future. If I click on this, it's not going to necessarily select it and discover this as an object, but in some photos it will, and it's only going to improve. So let's say we want to make a mask all three of these objects that it's detecting. What we can do is go to the layer, control click or right click and select mask all objects. And from here, you can see it created a mask for all those objects. If we select option or alt and select this mask, you can see that as we zoom in to the girl's hair, look at how well it selected the little wispy hairs around her. That's something that didn't happen before. So the selection tool is really improving a lot. And this is just a starting point from which you can easily start to make your designs and selections so much better. Same with the scooter here. It did a really good job without us having to go in and make any corrections. And the last update is to the iOS app of Photoshop. So if you use Photoshop on your iPad, or your iPhone, you can now use the background remover tool on the iOS app version. And you can also use content aware fill now. You can have the same capability as the desktop on your mobile devices and share projects with each other. So if you start content aware fill on the go, you can then finish up your design on the desktop. So those are all the major updates to Photoshop. I'm super excited about all of these updates because it's going to make my life easier when I have to make thumbnails and designs for the YouTube channel. One thing I wish and I hope that these same tools that are now for photos are going to evolve over time to be available and just as fast for video. So let me know what you think of the Photoshop updates. Are you excited for these tools? Are you excited for the future of photos and AI? I think it's super exciting exciting. If you're interested in learning about the Premiere Pro updates this fall, you can click right over here and you can click up here to watch other Photoshop tutorials on my channel. Thanks so much for watching and as always, keep creating better video and photo with Gal. See you next time. Bye! Ooh.